Well, what a wonderful time. I had meeting Millie on the last show. How fantastic was that? Such a lovely, warm person. And can I say, because I know Millie, Millie is a regular listener and viewer to this program, Millie, you look much better in the flesh than you do in the photographs. <laughs> it's true. It's funny, isn't it? You know, certainly on, I mean, <clears throat> take, for example, passport photographs, right? If we ever looked as ill and as sick as in most of our passport photographs, I don't think we'd ever be allowed to travel, would we? Think about it. Hello to you. Welcome along. My name's Chris Weird, and this is United Kingdom Talk, our uh, three times a week, half hour talk show. Hope you got to, used to the new format now. Half an hour to allow me to do all the other little things I do. Although, I have to say, the memory's been going a bit this week. Yes. Well, it all started off on the... I think it must have been because I had so much to do uh, when I was going to visit Millie. Uh, Millie, motorised Millie, has been on holiday here to the UK. She's from Minnesota. And she's been staying at a very, very posh hotel. The Marriott in Hoburn. Beautiful hotel. <gasps> Oh, let me tell you, I have never stayed in such a place. Posh, posh, that's an understatement, dear. Posh, God. Well, to start with, how do you think you get into the hotel, eh? You don't go through two old glass doors in the side of a building. Oh, no, there is a doorman there. No, not at the door, at the gates. <gasps> You come down High Hoburn, right, and uh, if, you, if you're going sort of towards the east of the city, you turn right and you go through these gates into a courtyard. And on these gates, which incidentally are open, there is a doorman. A doorman standing there, all smartly dressed in like a grey uniform. Can I help you, sir, he said to me. I, you know, I'm standing there in a pair of jeans and a T-shirt. And I thought, my God, you're a little bit underdressed here, Chris. <laughs> oh, hello, I've come to see um, Millie, <coughs> um, motorised Millie. Didn't know who motorised Millie was. Oh, what room number is that, sir? Room 309. Uh, he said, oh, OK, sir, uh, just go through to the reception there, help you there. So, OK. So I then walked through the gates over this very nice looking courtyard with a few cars parked in it. But it wasn't a car park, it was a courtyard. There's a big difference, dear. Posh, posh, posh. I walked into the doors. <gasps> oh, two lovely great big chandeliers hanging there. Big thick red carpet, uh, not, not carpet, a big red, red rug on the floor and marble all over the place. I've never seen anything like it. I, re I have never been in such a posh hotel. You know, and you, you look, you know, I thought to myself, oh, she must have a bit of money, Millie, with all this here, dear. And I was met at the reception desk by a woman. Um, hello, sir, how can I help you? Oh, hello, I've come to see Millie. Uh, she's in room 309. Uh, what's your name, sir? I said, Chris Reardon. Oh, yes, sir, I've got your name already here, sir. OK, if you could just wait there a moment. Uh, and they called someone. Oh, yes. They called someone. She didn't, like, vaguely point in the direction of the room. You know how it is, like, when you're in a supermarket or somewhere like that, and you don't know your way around, and you ask them, where is whatever? And, oh, it's over there. And, and they vaguely point, and they're not really interested. Oh, no. I felt, I felt a, oh, what's the word now? A something customer. I felt a valued customer. I really did feel like I was a valued customer. And then a man comes from nowhere. And he said, would you like to follow me, please, sir? And he takes you to the room. He actually walked me to the room. I mean, whether it was because I was in, you know, a, a T-shirt and jeans. Did I look a bit dodgy? Did, did you think look, I might lift something on the way up there? <laughs> Walk out with a couple of cushions or something like that. Okay? So we got in this, in this lift, right, and there's some buttons there. But 
it, it, this gets better and better, dear. It gets better and better. To get to Millie's room, you couldn't push a button. You had to put a key in a slot. Yes! You couldn't just push a button. He had a special, no, not a key, a card. He had a special card to get to her floor. God, I've never seen anything like it, dear. And anyway, the lift went up quietly and smoothly. Beautiful brass and wooden inside the lift. Oh, just, I mean, it's another world, isn't it? I mean, I'm thinking of having one of these lifts installed here, <laughs> where I live. I'd quite like that. Got to the floor, the lift door opens, and in front, in front of the lift is like a, a, a you know, a, 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 an antique table with a bowl of apples. I thought I should have one of those on the way out, dear. But I forgot, I completely forgot they were there on the way out. I said, oh, what, you know, I thought to myself, if I take an apple, there might be a camera watching these apples. I thought to myself, and on the way out later on, I'll take an apple, go down to the lift, and as I try and go through, I say, excuse me, you've stolen an apple. <gasps> Can you imagine the embarrassment, dear? Not having any, any of that. Apple stealing. And then I went into a, a, he took me to Millie's room and it knocked on the door. And uh, Millie opened. And uh, is there anything else we can, I can do for you, sir? No, that's it. Thank you very much for your kind help. <coughs> I don't, just, should I have given him a tip? Oh, I never thought of that. I'm glad I didn't mind. We can't go tipping all over the place. And how much would you tip a doorman? Would he be classed as a doorman or what? Now, someone watching or listening to this show will know that. <coughs> what, what is his position classed as? Doorman or what? He took me up from the reception to the room. And should I have tipped him? Let me know. There's an email address to the show. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris, I, I'm just going to have to go into the other room because I've forgotten something. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Always a pleasure to hear from you. Now, uh, where's my mobile phone? There was a mobile phone. We've got a mobile phone for uh, text messages as well now. As you probably know, unfortunately, I haven't written down the text number, so I can't give it out to you today. But um, we did get a couple of texts in. Just... Just firing up the system. Got a couple of texts in from Wayne. Wayne, you seem to be the only person who's using the text number. <coughs> it's funny, really. Ross Patzelt from... Oh, we've got, oh there's another one. From rosspatzelt.co.uk um, was the person who suggested that I set up a text phone number so that people can um, uh, text in. There's a couple coming in now. So let's have a quick look here. Um... <coughs> Now, where are we now? There we are. Text message from... I can't even work the blooming thing. Here we are. Where are we are. Oh, it might, it might help. It, <laughs> it might help if I delete the ones uh, that I've already read out. And uh, yes, it's another one from Wayne, who's in uh, Reading. He says he's not in Reading, but he is really. Lives in some hard-to-let properties there. He said, good God, on the show dated the 17th of September, as you were talking uh, about your weight, the chair you were sitting on started leaning. <laughs> I was waiting for you to fall in the flower bed with poor Catty. <laughs> when it says Wayne not in Reading. Why do you keep pretending you're not in Reading? <clears throat> eh? You should be proud of where you are, Wayne. Be proud. I mean, let's face it, it's not the best place in the world, dear, but be proud of where you are, dear. Um... He also thought it was very amusing, uh, a couple of shows after that, that my chair in the garden kept collapsing. He says, laugh out loud at the chair collapsing. It's those extra pounds. Was I the only one that Wayne not in... What's he say? Was, was, I the, was I the only one that... LOL, Wayne not in Reading. I don't know what you... What, you've lost the sentence there at the end, Wayne. Do try and speak a little bit more concisely. He also says, please, not naked on the sofa. James Dean, maybe. Now, that would be good. What, you'd like to see James Dean naked? Oh, my God. Well, I mean, mind you, it would probably be, um, be preferable to see uh, James Dean naked rather than in that dreadful outfit he had on the other time he came round here. That 
awful pink t-shirt. Wasn't it dreadful? Absolutely dreadful. And we have an international text here, boys and girls. Oh, Marsha in Florida. How are you, darling? An international text. Hi, Chris. Loving the new texting service. Just caught the... Oh, 9th of the... Oh, no, you... you the the uh, 5th of September um, show, where you found a spider and screamed like a girl. Hilarious. Well, it wasn't hilarious if you'd have seen it, Marsha. The thing was massive, dear. Massive. Where do all these nasty creatures come from, dear? Sp well, they're not nasty creatures. I mean, I don't know, really. Here's a question for you. What would you rather have? A couple of great big spiders in your room that, in all honesty, don't give us much hassle, do they? They don't start chasing us around or anything like that. Come on, how many people in the... I, I know in other countries this is different. But in the UK, how many people listening to this show have ever been bitten by a spider? It doesn't happen, does it? They run away from us. They are scared. What would you rather have? A couple of big spiders in the room, sort of doing nothing. They, they generally just sit in the middle of the web. Or... A few hundred flies flying around. I mean, they are just the vilest things ever, aren't they, flies? What are they? They must see God put them on the planet to do. What do they do? They must do something. <coughs> Isn't it? I mean, even wasps. Don't wasps do a similar job to bees without making the honey? Don't they do pollination? Wasps. Oh, I don't like wasps at all. So, um, thank you for those text messages. I wish... I had the text number with me here to give... Oh, hang on, it might be on here. I think it might be on here, the text number, if you want, want to text it. Oh, is it? One minute, one minute, one... Oh, yes, here we are. The text number. If you'd like to text into the show, remember, you can do the email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is the email address. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, the texting number is... If you're in the UK, 07815... 907-896, all right, 07815-907-896, or <clears throat> if you're international, abroad, somewhere other than the UK, as, and it does work, because Marsha, oh Marsha, you're my first ever international texter. I'm so excited. I'm so excited and I just can't find it. Then the international text number is dial your international access code which may or may not be double O followed by 44 for the UK 7815-907-896. All right. Your international access code followed by 44 for the UK, 7815-907-896. You know when I give the email and the um, phone number and all that business out, do you, do you think I speak too quickly? Does it, does it go too quick? If you do, please let me know. OK, because sometimes I do wonder if I'm uh, talking too quickly. Anyway, uh, back to Millie's Posh Hotel. So I went into her room, such a big room, massive room she's got there. And of course, Millie is disabled. Um, she lives her life in a wheelchair. And before they got there, they had arranged for all these various different, um, what would you call them, uh, gadgets and bits and pieces that assist disabled people um, in, in their lives. And that, would, that was all in the room as well. And the hotel couldn't do enough for her. Couldn't do enough for her. So. Uh, four marks for the Marriott um, in in High Hoban. As I say, a very, very posh hotel. She wouldn't tell me how much it cost, but I, I can imagine it would have cost her an arm and a leg uh, to stay there for two weeks. But it's <clears throat> one of those things, she's done the holiday properly. She's not cut corners or anything like that, which is something that I do, I'm afraid. When I go, you know, I still I cut corners. You know, I don't like to spend money unnecessarily. Um, and I think she had a really good time. Amazing, that hotel. I can't praise it enough. I really can't. The hotel staff were friendly and efficient. They were not stuck up. 
which is a, a, a completely different thing. They were not stuck up or, or tried to be better than they really were. They were really nice and friendly and efficient. And you couldn't really wish for more. So uh, lovely, as I say, to meet Millie uh, just a couple of days ago. It really was, and I think she's met Terry Turner, who's uh, another friend of mine as well, so I hope that went okay. But um, I was talking to you right at the beginning of the show today about I've been a bit forgetful. On the same day I was visiting Millie. Now get this. First of all, in the morning, I cycled to the bank, visited the bank, and then on the way back, I went swimming. <clears throat> so, on my bike, I've got two bags on the back, you know, panniers on each side, and a little bag on the top. In the bag on the top, I put my mobile, f I, I put stuff on the in, in the bag rather than in my pockets because I found often if you're cycling along, often stuff will like, somehow jump out of your pocket. I don't know why, that just happens. So I um, had the bag, I had the, my, my little money holder thing, my mobile phone and my keys in the back bag. I went swimming. And as I got to the swimming pool, I locked my bike up, as I always do, took my towel and uh, trunks and uh, shower gel, all in a bag, out of the side bag, went into my top bag, I took up my little money holder and my keys, put them in my pocket, and I went swimming. Now, I was in the swimming pool for about an hour. Come out of the swimming pool, had a shower, then I got changed, and I thought, I'd just check my phone messages, and I'm looking, oh, where's my phone? Wasn't in the bag wasn't in my pocket. I thought, oh my God, I must have left it in my bike. So I went back outside, quickly unzipped the bike thing, and there it was sitting there. It had been sitting outside in that bike bag for anyone to have stolen for an hour. How stupid am I? That's not the only thing this day. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse, dear. Then, right, when I went to see Millie, I had the phone left my phone on the, the passenger seat next to me as I was driving, because you don't answer phone. I've got the um, hands-free thing, right? And I went to see Millie, and we were talking, and we recorded the show there, and about two hours later, I suddenly realised I've left my phone on the seat in the car. Again, in full view of anyone who was walking past. I mean, I don't know about you, uh, wherever you are in the world, but that's a, that's a good way to have your phone nicked, really. Leave it on a car seat. And not only would you have your phone nicked, you'd have the window smashed as well, of course, wouldn't you? Got back to the car. Guess what? The phone is still sitting there, in full view of everyone, on that passenger seat. I thought, you are lucky today. You are forgetful, but very lucky. And here's the best one. So I got home. Right? Drove all the way home, opened the front door, and I thought, my back door's open. And I've got sort of gates on the front, so you have to open like three locks and go through two doors to get into my front door. The back garden um, was in full view as I walked through the front door. The back door I'd left wide open and the gate that goes across it completely wide open it had been and it had been open for four or five hours which actually i mean it, it sounds worse than it is because my, my garden is surrounded by um pyracantha bushes with, with with big spikes and that the police uh advise on things you know things that you can do cheaply and i've got a couple of cameras out the back and all that. I'm, I'm very very security conscious and I can't think of another time that I've ever, ever left the back door open like that. So three things, three potential disasters avoided on the same day that I visited Millie there. I and mean, can you just, how, how on earth did I manage to leave the house with that door wide open like that? I, I can't believe it. I must have had so much on my mind that day. I was just so, so nervous about being late to meet Millie. I wasn't nervous about meeting Millie, just nervous about... Um, you know, I, I get very worried about being late for people all the time. Do you? Or do you just turn up when you feel like I bet you just turn up when you feel like it, don't you? <laughs> sound, sound like some of the bar staff I work with, I tell you. So there we are, three disasters um, averted the other day. And I, I have to say, obviously, someone's looking after me up there at the moment, aren't they? Eh? Very, very worrying indeed. 
Okay, some emails then. Uh, let's hello to see, say hello to Lisa. Hello Lisa, it's been a while since we heard from you. She says, I love the show you did on the beach and all within or on it. <laughs> Oh, sorry, no, that's wrong. I love the beach. She's talking about the beach in general. I love the beach and all within or on it. Otters are one of my favourite creatures of the waters. I like this, like the adorable creature above. And she sent me a little photograph. Thanks for going to the trouble to set up to film on the beach. Really enjoyable, as indeed it was for me. It was actually quite a nice warm day as well, Lisa. Just a suggestion. Instead of being bothered by those few people that came into the background on the beach behind you, try going over to them and interviewing them a little. Introduce yourself very charmingly and ask if they'd mind being included on the show. Well, the trouble is with, you know, interviewing people randomly, they might be boring. This is the problem, Lisa. It's a little bit like my friend James Dean, who hosts the matinee show, James Dean uh, at uh, matineeshow.co.uk. Boring. I mean, that is boring. Oh, God, no. I don't know how I ever started talking to him. Often, you know, he's chatting away, and I, I can feel my eyes getting heavy, and... And like that. And I wake up, and he's still muttering on. Uh, Lisa says, if they agree, ask them things like what brought them to the beach. What well, probably the sea and the sand, I would think. I noticed they had a little toddler with them. I, I actually, it's funny you should say that, I didn't, I didn't know that anyone was really behind me, or who was behind me. I could hear a little bit of people walking on stones, but I don't think I looked round, did I? So I didn't know who was actually behind me. Um, you could, for example, ask them, was, uh, you could, for example, have asked them, was this his first time at the beach there? That's the sort of thing, she says. Um, uh, oh, that's the sort of thing Huel Halswa fellow on KCET, which is a PBS channel in the States, uh, in Los Angeles, uh, does on his shows. It really adds a lot of personable and charming quality to his shows. It also has made him into a local celebrity of sorts over these many years. He now gets VIP access into wherever he goes in California. Would you, wouldn't you enjoy receiving that sort of treatment to no lisa you'll be very very shocked at that possibly no i don't like all that vip business you know and james dean loves it oh he loves it going into these little enclosures where only vips are allowed no i i'm i'd rather be in the queue with everyone else and that, that's the truth of it i don't like all that um, vip treatment stuff uh, Lisa says, I know I sure would, but sadly, I still have yet to get off to get my good affordable camera. And I can only be out doing cooler days thanks to the lupus. What's, what's lupus? What's lupus? I don't know what that is. I had to stay out of the extreme heat and sun here in Bakersfield, uh, California. It really is a pain in the rear. Being stuck indoors when you love nature like I do. Yeah, I love being outside, as you know, uh, Lisa. I hope to make up for it come the cooler weather, though. Thanks for helping by having your outdoors nature shows, Chris. Uh, until next time, don't go hunting for any trolls. I've always preferred fairies for some reason. What are you suggesting, dear? What do you mean you prefer fairies? <laughs> Still, Chris, let it be known that trolls do need love too. They can't help. They were born with big noses. Hugs from Lisa. Lisa, I have a big nose, dear. It's an enormous nose. Concord was, 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 um, was designed on me. It was. And one more email here. Uh, over to Switzerland and Nile. I was talking about iPhones, and I'd love to have an iPhone, but I'm on Orange, and uh, we, they don't do the iPhone. It's only O2, the, the mobile company here in the UK. Hi, Chris. I've got an iPhone, and it's really nice. In Switzerland, we have Orange and Swisscom as competitors. I do, however, see on a number of forums that O2 may lose the exclusivity from the 9th of October this year here in the UK. I'd say, st I'd say stay put with Orange for now and see what transpires. 
Orange here did contact customers, invite them to register for more details when the iPhone was rumoured. As for battery life, is uh, the maximum you'll get out of the battery on normal usage? Uh, no, I do. And he goes on to say, it's possible to empty it less when the automatic push and Bluetooth are enabled and you're doing lots of internet access and GPS usage, uh, regards Niall. Yeah, I realise, actually, I noticed that when on the internet on the mobile phone, it does get through the battery a lot quicker. So uh, thanks very much for that, Niall. And uh, that's it from the show today. As always, thanks for joining me. Do send us an email. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. See you on the next show. From myself, Chris Reardon. Bye-bye now. Oh, I've just realised, I've sh I'm, hang on a minute, I'm shortchanging you here. I've got another three minutes to do. How stupid am I? Oh, this is just getting worse and worse. Is it, there must be something wrong with my mind. I'm losing the ability to think. I'm sure I am. Well, I'm sorry about that. We, we kind of stopped and started again. I, I had written down here 11, 19 minutes past, and I've finished... Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. I really don't know what I'm doing. Oh, well. Um, now, where are we going now? So we've done Niall's email, haven't we? There was, a, there was another thing here. Um, let me see. Oh, I'm all over the place now. Oh, dear. Oh, never, never mind, never mind. I'll tell you what I did do uh, the other day. I've washed my, washed my windows. I mean, washed my windows, dear. At last. I, I, I know, I'm not, I, I don't have a window cleaner. Oh, no, no, they're an absolute pain. I've had two window cleaners here and they've both been pains. One put his price up suddenly and said it was always that price and didn't believe me. Put it up 50 pence, 50 pence! Which actually, I didn't mind. I didn't mind the, the, the price going up 50 pence. I really didn't. But what he said, he came to me one day, I'm, I'm going back here 10 years or more now, and... Um, he said, um, uh, uh, it, it was always £4.75, and then he'd, he'd done the windows, and said, so, so, so I gave him the money, £4.75, oh, it's £5. Oh, it's gone up, okay, oh, what was it, five, I can't remember, uh, it's £5 now. Uh, oh, right, okay, then I, I, I'll go and get it, there you go, there you go. Uh, so, it's, oh, it's gone up a little bit, so I said to him, so he said, he said uh, no, it's always been £5, I said, well, no, no, it's always been four fifty. I said, but it's not a problem. I said, you've kept it the same price for a couple of years. That's no problem. And he's like, no, no, it's, it's always been £5. I said, well, it hasn't. And he's like, are you calling me a liar? And I thought, oh, just, there's your money and go. Don't come back. And the other one, he woke me up at half past eight one morning when he damn well knows that I'm asleep at that time in the morning because I am a night worker. So I had to sack him as well. So I've, I've done my own windows. I do my own windows, and I did them this week again, right? I say again, hang on, I'm just getting to that. While I was doing them, my, my lovely neighbour down the end, Pearl, um, it was quite a warm day, and I had my top off, right? Which is probably quite exciting for you boys and girls. I had my top off. So I'm up this ladder, and I said to Pearl, oh, Pearl, I said, what happened to my nice body that I had a few years ago? She said, oh, we all go south. We all go south eventually, she said. And I said to her, I said, well, your two boys haven't gone south, have they? And I said, one of them is a window cleaner. He said, she said, yeah, that's because he cleans windows. He's up and down ladders all day. I said, well, I'm cleaning my windows. I mean, I've done them twice this year, dear. Twice. And I still haven't got a fit body. So what's going on there? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's been a bit of a show, really, hasn't it? It's been all over the place. If I was a professional... I'd sit here and do the entire thing again so I could get my timings right and everything. I'm just very, very confused. Hopefully, though, I will not be leaving my mobile phones anywhere today or the back door open. Yes, I know. We don't want to be doing that again. Once again, thanks for watching and listening to the show. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. Now, I'm really going now. All right, I really am. See you on the next show. Bye-bye.